This Let's Play was supported by these awesome hobby companies. Hi everybody and welcome. Today I'm joined in the studio by Jerry and we are going to be having a look at a bit of a round breakdown for Storm Sunder. So mm. Jerry, uh, for anyone who hasn't seen this game before, what is it we're looking at here? So this is essentially a narrative uh, choose your own adventure style of game with a skirmish board game mm -hmm. built into it or layered around it. Um, so we've actually hit a point in the story, and we'll not go into it because I don't want to go for spoilers, mm. but we're fighting in a council chamber uh, against Council Aid Devor, and our erstwhile band of heroes um, have come face to face with him and his guards. I see. Now, uh, looking at what we have on the table, so we, we're each controlling two characters yes. uh, who are very different. Some of the classic sort of archetypes we have, we've got a healer, we've mm -hmm. got a roguelike character, we've got a tank, and we've got a DPS character, kind of a rogue as well. Yeah. Maybe a hunter. Uh, as well as that, we've got our main game board here mm -hmm. with everybody on it. So basically all of this is where we're going to be moving and seeing stuff around the board. We've got some of the villain sheets here because there is AI in this. We've got up along here is sort of a tracker to tell us who's yep. going and when. Uh, other than that, anything else really that you want to point out first? Yeah, everything. Everything. So, <laughs> um, when you get to an encounter in the book, mm -hmm. this is your encounter setup. And it tells you, first of all, your encounter conditions. So um, our victory objective is to slay all of the enemies. Mm -hmm. So there are five in this room, four okay. behind us and one in front. Murder them all, OK. However, that's not the only way this encounter can end. Um, so unlike some other games where an encounter will finish if you get um, wiped out, mm -hmm. if you get defeated, it will tell you where to go next. Mm -hmm. So you're not always killed. So for victory, we need to slay everybody. If all the heroes are down, then it's a defeat, and we go somewhere else. Um, after the encounter, there's time to rest, and rest is important because of the um, loot decks. So whenever you kill an opponent, you get an amount of loot equal to their card. So if I bring in the tar pick Cardsman here, mm. so he actually has a little loot one symbol here. Mm -hmm. But the Counselor Devore uh -huh. has loot five. I see. So you would actually flip either one or five of these cards. Mm -hmm. And then they tell you where to go next because the loot themselves isn't just one deck. It's split into consumables, armor, equipment, and yeah. weapons. Yeah, and then you've got common and rare versions as well. They're common and rare. They're also unique, unique and epic. But the encounter book will tell you what to set out. So yeah. after this encounter, we could rest. Yeah. But when you rest, you shuffle the, the base loot deck back in, I see. which means if you've burnt through in this case, nine cards. Those nine cards will go back in. Some of them have nothing. Mm -hmm. Some of them can just be a handful of gold. So yeah. if you want to get decent items out of your looting, sometimes it's best not to rest. I see. So you can push on to the next encounter and start yeah. digging through some of the treasures that you could find in your adventure. Exactly. Gotcha. You also have um, another facet to look at, which is if your character gets downed, mm -hmm. um, so if they get all their, their hit points gone, they can be resurrected during the game, mm -hmm. but every time they're rezzed, they take a um, injury card. Uh, At the end of a, an encounter, yes. you have a chance to roll to see if you can remove that injury. Okay. If you rest, you remove one injury. If you go to a haven to rest, you remove all injuries. Right. But those rests shuffle the loot counters back, so you can push on to try and get better loot, but some of your party may be carrying injuries with them that will affect them in further encounters, so you have yeah. to play a, a sort of balancing game. Yeah, so there's a bit of resource management there. Yeah. Okay, the other thing the encounter sheet will tell you then is the map layout. So mm -hmm. where you put specific pieces of terrain will go down there, where the heroes go down. And then also, most significantly, this track here, which is actually the initiative track for the encounter. Mm -hmm. So we actually have this laid out across the top of the, uh, yeah. the board here. Yeah. So where you have a little strongman item icon, that is a hero. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it will be a specific hero, so it will tell you Alexander, if he's in the party, will activate at this point. Yeah. Or if it's just a little strong man, then it's up to the party as a group to decide who activates when and where. Yeah. Then they also will go through the, the various villains, and they're numbered, and they also have little counters uh, yeah. on the the table that go with them. So you know when There's you hit yeah. Tarpit Guardsman 1, Tarpit Guardsman 1 is over there, what he'll do to activate. I see. OK, so at the minute, at the start of a round, we get one hero to go. Yes. Then all the enemies go. 
Yes. And then our last heroes get to go, yeah? Yeah. OK, cool. That's pretty much it for layout. Mm -hmm. um, it's an RPG style game, so where you've got a character, they've got all of their stats. Uh, some of the stats are used for combat. Some of the stats are used out of combat in the RPG side. So there are things like charisma. There is um, strength for doing strength checks, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so as you read through the, the game, it will explain those. But mostly what you need to worry yourself about when you're actually in an encounter is your character, the equipment they have um, actually equipped on them. Yeah. And they can swap that in combat. So you can, if you've got a, a party stash that you can build up as you play, you can swap in weapons and swap out weapons that will cost you action points. Yeah. Um, you have a deck of cards for each hero, which has their abilities. So these are a mixture of generic and specific abilities. Um, so some things like punch, I think every hero has, and then there are other specific ones. Yeah. And you get five of these to begin with. OK. Three, four, five. That forms your hand. They, the hand size should be fixed at five. Some heroes can uh, ignore that mm -hmm. for certain things. Um, the hands themselves are generally good, although sometimes there are negative abilities that change over time as your character develops. So initially, this group which is a mixture of demon, human, and vampire have been pushed together mm -hmm. um, to go on this uh, heroic quest through the world of, of Storm Sunder to try and gather items to end uh, a storm that has been raging across the lands. And initially, there's a bit of friction in the group, but over time, hopefully, that, that will dissipate and they'll work a bit more cohesively. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So your group is going to evolve as you play through this game? Yeah. Yeah, that is the plan, but it means at the start you may hit negative cards in your ability cards and they have to be played whenever you, you activate if you've got them in your hand. Mm -hmm. And they can be disadvantageous, especially in the early games, because there aren't any real easy fights. Mm -hmm. um, even the basic guardsmen here have 18, 18 hit, yeah, yeah. Um, which compared to Vanessa's got 18, she's a hero. Now, yeah. yes, she can stand back up multiple times, but if, if you get knocked down yeah. and have three injuries on you, the fourth time you get knocked down, you're not getting up. So yeah, well that that makes me kind of nervous because I've got Adina and I've got uh, Alexander here. So mm. Adina's got 14 health. Yes. Alexander has 17 health. So it's probably best not to get into a massive stand-up fight with them. Yeah, now, let's not go too gung ho. It's not going to be particularly easy, mind you, because we have kicked off here. So yeah. like I say, we're not going to get into the story of how we've arrived at this part because yeah. uh, we don't want to ruin it really. Yeah, you want people to enjoy the yeah. story. Yeah. So. With that in mind, mm -hmm. uh, anything else that comes up, I think we can explain it as we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, start of the round, one of our heroes gets. One to of go. our heroes gets to go. Now, we're in here to kill Councillor Devore mm -hmm. in this back corner. So, the options are to get into him immediately, or to try and block off some of his guards. Or, yeah, you know, we we have options. I will say, the AI deck tells people who to attack mm -hmm. and how to attack. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell them um, what they should use to attack, and those are on these actual larger cards themselves. So Councillor Devor has one main attack, but before he does that, he gets get them. So whenever he activates, the closest tar pit ally makes a free activation. Mm -hmm. So that one of these guys is going to get to go before he goes, mm -hmm. just as a little bonus. Yeah. So essentially, we're going to be fighting five guardsmen, yeah. or at least a guardsman with a double activation. Also, any time we hit him, he has a defensive uh, ability called Help Me, Damn You. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the closest ally also makes a free activation. So because they've got a big chunk of activations between us, yeah. some of our activations are still going to be broken up by m these bonus actions that will kick off. Yeah. And they are not easy people to take down. All right. Well, because it's cooperative, what do you think is the best thing to do to actually start getting laid into some of these? I'm just going to have you a, think is our, our best to kick off with? I'm going to have a quick look and see what I can do. Mm -hmm. um, so my tank, which is Capic Rocker, mm -hmm. who's a large fellow who's come here to help, um, he can spend three action points to select an adjacent target, and that target must attack this hero on its next activation. So putting my tank in front of a pair of them mm -hmm. uh, and then spending some action points might be an idea. Yeah. I don't have anything negative in his hand if he activates. I do have a negative one for Vanessa. Yeah, both of mine have a negative in them. How how bad is that negative? 
Uh, well, for uh, Alexander, it's uh, the next hero who activates loses 1 AP. If that hero is Alexandra, she gains 1 AP. So I don't want to kick him off yet, but he does have a zero cost ability. Mm -hmm. And as far as I understand it, you can play those as like buffs. You can play them as buffs, you can play them as interrupts mm -hmm. in your opponent's turn as well. All right, so I have one called Glory of Tarpit, which is discard to enhance the, the attack of an ally with two base damage. Okay. So I can buff someone by two. Uh, as for Adina, uh, she currently has a, a nice little heal mm -hmm. uh, sitting there. She can heal herself on her turn. She's got herself out, which means uh, she can't use stat bonuses during her activation. Mm. Uh, I don't think I have any stat bonuses at the moment, so that's kind of okay. Yeah. Uh, other than that, yeah, I think let's go with the tank. I think going with the tank is, is the way to go. So any of the heroes that activate, their movement is free. Mm -hmm. Everybody has five action points to begin with. Mm -hmm. So movement doesn't cost any action points. Right. Um, and so movement is the little wing symbol. Uh, yeah, so movement is the wing symbol on the card. So he only moves three, but three should be sufficient. Yeah. If I bring him into here, he's blocking the way between the healer and these two guardsmen. That's probably a good idea. And I think that's probably their best bet to begin yeah, with. Because she is quite squishy. Yeah, so he'll move to there. Uh -huh. uh, the guardsmen are terrible in that as long as they're adjacent to a friend, they get plus one defense. They're very difficult. So really the best way to take the guardsmen down is to separate them. Yeah, or flank them. Or flank them. Uh, they can't be assigned damage unless they're flanked, and assigning damage skips armor, but we'll get to that when we hit a combat. Yeah. Um, so I have a Serpent Tongues Flail, mm -hmm. which is two red dice. So our dice in this game, you've got green dice, which are physical, blue dice, which are magical, red dice, which are impact. The red dice are the best. The skull is actually a crit symbol, mm -hmm. so it's quite good. The um, Star is a special, so if an ability has a special, it activates on those. Mm -hmm. And then ones or two swords are just ones or twos, essentially blank faces or blank faces. So those mm -hmm. are what you're rolling. So red's great. They all have base damage as well. So he'll do three damage plus whatever the result is on the dice, yeah. which isn't fantastic because they've got fairly decent armor to begin with anyway. Yeah, I know those guys, they're their stats, their magical defense is pretty poo. Their magical defense is zero. So yeah. in the grand scheme of things, hitting them with magic is a great idea. But to give you an idea of how how the cards and abilities and all work together, mm. it costs three for him to attack, three AP for him yep. to use his just base attack. Yeah, out of his initial five. Out of his initial five. The cards themselves will also have a value. So they can be zero, one, or two, mm -hmm. and they may give you bonus to your attacks to your armor to buff to a friend. Mm -hmm. But they can also be spent, so I could actually discard these for free. And every time I discard one, I get the action point cost in power, mm -hmm. and power can be used to build up my big abilities. So I have a, everybody has a utility and an ultimate ability. So my utility ability for this gentleman is shield bash. So for the cost of four power, so it's relatively low, uh, I get to assign five damage to a Jason attacker, which is amazing because assign goes past the defense. So the fact that these have high defense, I could skip that, although I would need to be in a flanking position. Mm -hmm. um, my ultimate ability is unchained. So for eight power, uh, when he's attacked due to a challenge, the damage is converted to health, not counting armor or defense. Mm -hmm. So instead of taking damage, I heal, which is great because as you play, your defense stays static mm -hmm. uh, and it negates damage incoming. You also have armor and armor drops. So every time you take damage and it's gone over your, your armor and defense, you lose a point of armor and yeah. you slowly take more damage as the fight progresses. Mm -hmm. But at that time, you should also be powering up these these buffed abilities. So Yeah, and then so your armor and defense, the defense is the, the little shield on your stat card there with the star in it. Yes. And your armor is just the gray one with the shield. Yeah, so that there are tokens because things can change in game and over time. Mm -hmm. You don't have a fixed stat or defense. Yeah. Um, so, you've, so you've done your move. Done my move. You're you're thinking about swinging and hitting him. I am very very much thinking about swinging and hitting him. Um, right. Uh, in that case, I will play Glory of Tarpit. Right. Which is going to increase your base damage by two to five. Okay. Is there anything more you could chuck into that? Not really. Um, well, it'll help you break past that armor. Yeah. 
So that gives me plus two to my base damage of three. Yep. So you're it's on going, five base. It's going to cost me three action points to activate there anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, which means I don't have enough left for challenge, but hopefully because I'm blocking the way, that will make life much easier. Okay, so I'm just going to get a two dice, two red dice roll. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I can spend one on Jawbreaker. Okay. And Jawbreaker will apply stun to the target. Yeah, and I'm so. applying that, which is your plus two base damage. So even if I don't get through his armor, it will stun him. Uh, well, you are through his armor automatically now, I think. So what's his base defense? His base defense is two. It goes up to three because he's adjacent mm -hmm. to an ally. Yeah, so. so basically you're guaranteeing two damage so far. Okay, two damage and a stun on our survey Plus. says. Uh, weirdly, I would have got stun one for that as well anyway, so mm -hmm. kind of wasted the stun card, but there you go. Plus one damage for this. So, so three damage total. Three damage in total on guard number three. Okay, uh, the easiest way to do this is we just put the damage tokens onto their activation card yeah. in the chain there. Uh, I have action points left, but there's nothing I can do. Mm -hmm. um, Are there any cards you want to discard to gain power? I am definitely going to do that. So I'm actually going to discard. I'm going to discard Take a Breather, which allows me to refill my hand, and Domination, which allows me to activate a creature, because there are no creatures in this, mm -hmm. which will give me four power right off the bat. Nice. Um, and I'm also, because I have one point left, I'm also going to use Resolute to gain two armor. Oh, good so, choice. So I'll throw those in yeah. there. And when you take power, mm -hmm. you have to assign it to an ability. So I'm going to assign those into Shield Bash immediately. If you go over the amount of power you can have in an ability, mm -hmm. it, it's OK. So even if I ended up with nine on Unchained yeah. or five in here, whenever you use the ability, the excess stays on the card, so it can be used again. So you're, gotcha. you're powering up towards it. Right, so I, I assume you're you're going to just keep track of the, the bonus two armor you have for now. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab a token for those in a moment. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so turn over. Last thing I need to do is draw three cards. Uh huh. Uh, unless you're already at your hand limit of five. Okay. So I'll draw three new cards for him, none of which need to be played, and that is me over. Oh, and I get a taunt, which is good. So I can place this on a nearby ally. The next enemy to attack that ally attacks this hero instead. Uh, is that a zero cost? It's a zero cost. So I'm going to pop that on Dina. Yeah. Because even though I'm blocking two. Yeah, protect the healer. Guards one and two may actually activate in the, uh, well, they will mm -hmm. more likely not activate first anyway. So, um, and then the flip of the card will tell us where they go to. Mm -hmm. So that's me done. We move our token along to, in this case, Councillor Aid Devore. Yeah, he is right here on the table. Uh, and the first thing he's going to do is get them. So the closest tar pit ally makes a free activation, and the closest will be ally number two. Right here. Mm. So if I flip the adversary card, mm -hmm. we get challenge is actually. So he's going to attack the person with the highest health. I currently have health 27. I should get a plus three to that, so I've got health 30. Mm -hmm. um, and the attack gets plus one dice as well. So <sighs> that's that's how challenge works and how adversary cards work. So mm -hmm. number one, you can move through. You just can't finish on friends. Okay. So he can come into here. He can also move diagonally. So either way, he's going to go one, two, three. He will get adjacent. And mm -hmm. um, we know he has elegant strike. So he advance and can attack three adjacent fields. Thankfully. He is only adjacent to one at the yep. moment. Um, okay. He gets two green, two red dice, and he will get a bonus dice. So okay. whenever you get a bonus, you always take from the first die on the card. So in this case, he'll get the bonus dice as a green, mm -hmm. not a red, which is good because impact would be terrible here. Yeah. My bonus two armor may not be on me much longer, actually. <laughs> Okay. Oh, five. So five, not ideal, mm -hmm. but my armor is currently six and I have a defense of three, so they need nine to get through me. If you don't beat, you don't lose any armor. Mm -hmm. If you take damage, 
then you start taking the armor off. So in that case, I see. I'm actually fairly now, is tanky. It beat defense or beat everything? Beat everything. I see. So until you take damage, you don't lose armor. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Cool. So they can't chip you away. Yeah, it's not death by a thousand cuts. Mm -hmm. um, All right. So he up. now gets his main activation. Yeah? He gets his main activation, uh, which is coward strike. He will advance, attack, and then retreat, and he will do this towards the lowest health. That'll be me mm. on 14. And you get a plus two base damage. He gets plus two base damage? Yeah, he okay. does. Yeah. So, all right, so from where he is, what's his movement? Four? He has a movement of four, so he can easily reach yep. all of us here. So on two is all he needs to get to me, because I have the lowest health. Yes. So what does Taunt do for you? Uh, Place this card on a nearby ally, the next enemy to target that ally, targets this here instead. So instead of that, he will then be moving mm. an additional one, two, and yes. swinging on to you. To get to me, mm -hmm. which is fine. He so, has three red and three green. Oof. Three red, three green, and he gets a bonus die, you say? He gets, he gets plus two base damage. Ah, I so see. not a bonus dice, but... So this could Actually, be painful for you. So, so this may this may almost certainly take a big chunk off. Uh, depending. Oh, oh, that's not a good sign. I apologise. That's three criticals. Okay. And three regular. He doesn't have anything on a special, so we can ignore the special. Mm -hmm. A critical attack is worth three by itself, so that's nine. So that twelve total. So that equals my armor, mm -hmm. uh, as things currently stand. I'll take three points of damage. And I'll also lose one of my bonus armor. Okay. Uh, so three damage for you. Yes, please. All right. Now I have sympathetic, which uh, can allow me to heal you for four. Well, we're not. But I'm going to wait until it's going to do its maximum. We're not done with Devor yet. Mm. So. All right. So I can only play this on a hero's turn. No, no, you can play it in his turn. However, as part of Coward Strike. He advances, attacks, and then retreats. Mm -hmm. So how far does he retreat? Just his base movement? Yeah, he'll he'll go back to wherever he started. I see. Um, so in this case, and regardless there. of range or anything else, he essentially pops in and pops back. I see. So he's run up, shivved me, and then run off again. I see. And then Tonk goes away, I assume? Tonk goes away because that was used. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. Mm -hmm. You can heal if you want, or you can just leave it. It's up to you. Uh, because it's only done three so far, I'm going to wait till it does its maximum. Yeah. Four. Nah, there's, there's, no it, there's no point burning it. No point in wasting. Okay. Because I think every point of health is going to count here. Very true. So we're moving along to tar pit number one. So number one, he's, he's next going to, you. to assault the nearest enemy, so straight into me again, mm -hmm. and the attack will ignore one of my defense. Okay. So again, he's got two green, two red. Plus one, no, no plus no, no. one this time? No, he's ignoring one of my defense. Uh -huh. So that's only going to be three. Does nothing. My defense is three, plus my armor is five currently. So yeah. just plinks harmlessly off me. Bonk. OK. Uh, tar pit number two, then. It'd be nice if one of them ran towards you. I know running towards the tank makes sense. Mm. The nearest enemy. So it'll move towards the nearest enemy, heal self for eight. That's a big heal that it's wasting, which is nice because I'd hate to have seen that come out yep. with Devore later on. So the nearest enemy would be Alexander? Yes, he'd just run straight into the back of you. Uh-huh. And does he get into attack me there? Um, no, in this one. Oh, no, he will because he's attacking the nearest enemy and he yep. has elegant strike. The bad news here is that is a three linked adjacent field. So he won't just attack you. He'll swing that halberd straight through you and into me as well. So I we'll see. both be taking this sweet, sweet leveling. Uh -huh. All right. So two and two again. Yep. Let's see what we can do here. Hopefully my rolling doesn't get janky and do yeah. weird stuff. So first and Alexander then. Uh, two. Two with no, he has no special on it. Uh -huh. So that's okay. Yeah, so Alexander is fine. It does nothing. And then I'll roll for myself because... Yeah, you don't want me hurting you. Yeah, I'd much rather self-flagellate. Oh, so, you definitely self-flagellate there. So there's four, seven, eight damage into me. Ouch. Vanessa has three, so that goes down to five, and I lose a point of armor, which I and actually throw over there. Five of the finest damage. Yeah, and at that point... 
healing the tank is probably less important. Yeah. Considering my damage pool is still huge. Yeah. And yeah, well, I mean, like your defense pool is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, right. So he's done. He is done. We're on um, to number three, who's injured. Uh, I think I will take a second yes. to heal you. Heal for four. Yes. Okay. That all sounds great. And target guardsman number four, which is number three, yet. will also overwhelm, going for the lowest health with a plus three base damage to his attack. Oof. So that's kind of horrible. So, so lowest health currently is Adena again. Uh, yeah. Yep. Definitely. Um, so he can move diagonally through his friend and into and here. Yeah. And then his swing will again. It's three linked. Mm -hmm. So even though there are three uh, enemies within his um, arc. arc, essentially, yep. they're, they're not adjacent. You mm -hmm. can't jump gaps. Uh, so it will only just hit her. It's not going to hit the tank as well. I see. So link the, the strike has to continue through it one person, continue. two person, three person. It, it doesn't, doesn't even have to be because sometimes it can be magic, and magic can go in various directions, but they yeah. have to be all adjacent to each other, gotcha. so not to the, the target. All right, well, I will give myself a little love tap here. Yep. So on to Adina, who has only one defense. Bosh. So That's that'll five. be four damage yep. at the end of it. Ow. One. Well, you know, two, omelet and eggs. Three. You can't yeah. kill a council vampire. Four. Yeah. without breaking some eggs. Yeah, now the, the nice thing is I actually have a couple of things on here that can help myself. I've got mm -hmm. Blast Aid for two, which would heal me for six. Yeah. So I can basically oh, yeah. do about half my health back yeah. again very quickly. As long as, um, oh, sorry, there was a plus three base damage on that Overwhelm, so take oh. another three. Damn. Um, so as long as you don't get one-shotted. Five, six, seven. Just another three on you, yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I probably will use that whenever my turn comes mm. around very quickly. Tarpic Guardsman number four. Yeah, uh, where is he? And he will harass the nearest enemy. And all nearby enemies are damaged three, or assigned three damage, rather. Mm. So. I'll be straight into you here. Straight then. into me. He's tucked in the corner and can't really hurt anybody else. So yeah, that so will harden him. Have an additional three damage. Mm. And the assigned skips my armor. So I will yeah. take three regardless. Plus, I will take another. Nothing, because that yep. won't get through my armor. So it's just a flat three. Yep. So uh, I'll just pop a five on there and there's two. two. Yeah. Bish bish. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're onto our regular heroes. Into the heroes. Mm -hmm. Now remember, every time we damage or attack um, Devor, mm -hmm. the closest guardsman will also activate. Get a swing. Yeah. So it's tricky to take down. Yeah. Um, Honestly, mm. what I'm looking at here, because it might be entertaining, is you see if I activate uh, Alexander. Yes. From where he is, he can just go one, two to here, and then we can both be flanking this jackass. Yes, and that's just true. Stab him the hell up. That is very true. Mm -hmm. um, now, sorry, my, my, let me just our only downside to that three is to three. Uh, he will make someone lose an AP. Yeah. Uh, I'll throw out another couple then for you. Mm -hmm. What else Cur do you think you might do? Currently, if he's standing there, mm -hmm. he can. We're flanking this guardsman in the center, mm -hmm. but you're also flanking between yeah. uh, Adina and this guardsman. Yeah, and then I'm also flanking there to Vanessa. So, getting Alexander into here means we've got options. Yeah, because guardsman three's already taken three wounds. Guardsman yeah. one's fresh. Yeah, well, we might be better having. Your Vanessa go first onto this blanked one mm -hmm. and start pummeling him. Yes. And then we'll go with Alexander. Yep. Because that way he's not having to choose someone to lose an action point right now. Yeah. Okay. Which is probably just as well because Vanessa will activate with Survivor's Guilt, mm -hmm. which burns one of her action points anyway. Because oh. you know what must be done. Yeah. So as uh, her race has mostly been wiped out. Um, but. It does leave me with four action points, three for her crossbow. Mm -hmm. And it applies blind on a special. So four green dice, that's not terrible. That's pretty cool. Along with the base damage. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of each round, Vanessa may move two fields for free. So I could run off a bit. Mm. 
Um, if well, I run off, you, I'm no longer flanking, so that's not a good thing. Well, if you moved to here, mm. you can flank the already damaged one and start hitting them. This is the already damaged one. Oh, that's the already damaged yeah. one. Okay, sorry for that. Um, I, well, yeah, but then at that point, I'm moving for the sake of moving. Yeah, and there's no point then. Yeah. So we won't move for free. I can discard uh, one card to apply marked to a target. The hero gains one power when they damage the marked target, and only one target can be marked. Mm. So I've only got four action points left. Yeah. It's going to cost me... Three to do a base attack. Ooh. You find something spicy. I find explosive shot too. Mm -hmm. Uh, requires range, that's fine. Assign four damage to all enemies adjacent to the target. Ah. So if she does move, she will be flanking two. And they can be assigned damage because normally they can't because of the defensive formation. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I'll do move two for free. Okay. So now we're still flanking these two. Mm -hmm. I can spend one for that card. And assign four damage to both one and three. Oof. So that's a good start. Three, four. So that's going on to number one. one. Yep. And one, two. Yeah, if you just grab three. a five, I'll take one off three. All right. There we go. So you can do a little bit of maths with the, the blood counters to actually just track your damage and keep changing the pool. Okay. I will discard a card. I'm going to discard. I'm going to discard dash. Yeah, the bonus movement. Because it's bonus movement. It's not costing me anything. I don't really need to run and hide in a corner mm -hmm. right now. However, being able to mark number three, who's already on eight damage, is good. Yeah. And then I will shoot with my three remaining action points into number three, the back yep. of his head. So four green dice. Mm -hmm. And looking for all of the swords. Mm. I get two swords and a special. Okay, and then on a special? Uh, for special, I apply blind to that target, and I also gain one power because he's my marked, and I will put it onto tenacity, halves damage, woman possessed. At the end of her activation, she can activate again. Oh, That'd be lovely. That would be. I don't think we'll get that far, but I'll chuck <laughs> it on there anyway. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the two damage won't get through their, their base armor. Yeah. Never mind his bonus armor for having a friend, but the, uh, you know, I can mm. live with that. Finally, I'm going to use punch, and punch normally costs two. Uh, is there well, any point? Actually, did. no, no, there's no. Uh, I could use it again for free because I'm attacking an adjacent target. However, yeah. I've just realized it's only one green dice. Yeah, and, and their the defense best, is ridiculous. Their, their defense is two without the bonus, so I couldn't actually get through. So I yeah. won't. Okay. Um, but I will discard. I'm going to discard punch for two more power. Okay. And that will end her turn. And okay. she's starting to rage like a woman possessed. So I see. Three cards. One, two, three for me. Mm -hmm. Give me a new hand. Right. And they've had no free activations. No free activations because we haven't tickled anybody who needs tickled. Yeah. Now, here's a question. Mm. So, as things stand. Mm hmm. These two guards are now flanked, right? Yes. So I don't need to move him in to flank and reflank this one. What I can do, however, is move him to here, and then this one's flanked too, and he's on his lonesome. Yes. So I might do that, mm -hmm. but first I think I'll activate Adina. Okay. And have her do some stuff. Okay. So the first thing Adina is going to do... First thing she has to do is the negative. Is the negative. So self-doubt, this hero may not use stat bonuses for this activation. I have nothing that's giving me stat bonuses, I think, as far as I can tell yes. so far. So True. that's perfect for that to come out then. Okay. I have five points to spend. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to spend Blast Aid. Yes. Which is going to heal me for six. Okay. So I can get some health back. Handy. So I'm on 13 now. Yes. And then I'm going to take the, the classic priest's weapon of a brick on a stick and lamp this guy on the head. Okie dokie. So it's costing me three energy. It's got a range of two, which we're not worried about. Rolls three blue dice. Three blue dice. And it has a base damage of four. Plus, you get plus two because you're flanking, so you have a base damage of six currently. Okay, so... Plus whatever comes up on the blue. Yeah. And... Okay, this is great. So, seven damage total. Yep. And I got 
two specials. Okay. What specials do for me is, uh, for my armor, the Robe of the Phoenix, on each special, I heal myself for two. All right, that's So nice. I'm now back up to full health. Okay, you've done seven damage. Mm -hmm. He has a defense of three. Mm -hmm. So four damage actually goes on to number three, who's, uh -huh. who's the guardian who's absolutely hammered at the moment. Yes. Puts him up to 10. Nice. And I yeah, think that. that will oh. end my turn. So I draw three, yes? Yes. Up to five is the max. That's true. Oh, cool. The marked guard is also blinded. I must not forget that. Yeah, I assume that means he can't attack next time he activates? Um, he can't target enemies or allies on their next activation, uh -huh. and they cannot become prepared. Okay. Thankfully, we haven't run into yet. Yeah, all right. So, uh, next one to activate is Alexander. Mm -hmm. So, at the start of his turn, he has Guile. This yeah. hero draws one card at the beginning of their activation, regardless of how many cards they have. Okay. So he gets a claw. Uh, we will have to do antagonistic. Yes. So next hero who activates loses one AP. Um, we'll just have to set that to one side. I will just put it on Adina. Okay. Because the next time she activates, she'll just have one less, which I think is fair enough. Sure. Uh, then he's got his movement. So I'll have him move to here. Mm -hmm. We're now flanking this guy. He's yes. not getting his defensive bonus, which is fantastic. Uh, I haven't used any AP yet, mm -hmm. so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to assign, well, no, I'm going to hang on to that till I'm hurt. I don't need to use that. Yeah, so I'm just going to go for a regular attack. Yep. So it's three green, one red. So if you'll gather those for me, please. Yep. Uh, if I get any specials, uh, double special is assigned damage, okay. which is quite nice. So let's see what we roll. That one cocked. Okay. So that's four plus three is seven, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. Uh, so seven. Seven there. Ten total. No, 12. You're flanking, so you get plus two to your base damage. Yep. So 12 total into him, minus his armor of, of two. two. So 10. 10 damage. Hit him. Mm. So he's number. Number two. Number two? Yep. Okay. Bosh. Good hit. I will then play Claw. Mm -hmm. uh, this attack is free if, act if activated immediately after attacking an adjacent target. Good. So it's only one red die, mm -hmm. but I might get a critical on Yeah. There are no blanks on the red, I think. Uh, no. So it's only one. It does nothing, but it was worth it. Swing. You, However, still have to still add your base, you still have to add your base damage. All right. So that becomes four. Plus your flanking. Becomes six. There so four damage. So four more damage. Okay. Eight, four. Uh, murder, murder, murder. He's only got four health left. He's only got four health left. There's a loot card in it. There is. Um, and then if you've nothing else to do. Oh, no, I do. Do you? Because I've got self-preservation. Okay. Uh, so it's a zero cost. Yes. It gives me plus two AP. Should be enough then to attack again. Exactly. So I should be able to finish him mm. and murder him. Push. I think that'll murder him. So two, four, six there, plus. Plus the three is nine, plus, plus the two, two is eleven, yep. minus the two is nine damage. He nine is damage. He is dead. Wah, wah. And that is number two. Gone and out of the chain. So that's good. And you also get to draw a loot card. Okay, so that's this deck here, yeah? That is that deck, yes. Oh, am I going to get something nice? Hey, I found a bag of gold. A bag of gold? Yeah, uh, that's cool. Oh, wait, hang on. Don't get too excited. It's a bag with only two gold coins in it. Oh, well, not, not that exciting then. Okay. Money is money. I will take it. You know, a, a, a good friend of mine always says, 20 quid is 20 quid. No, that is true. <laughs> all right. And I think, yeah, that's all he really wants to do now. So I'll okay. draw his self back up to Draw three back, yeah. Five. All right. And that is how our round plays out. Is there anything else we would do at the end of a round? No, well, assuming you haven't um, hit any, ob well, encounter objectives or achievements or, or completed whatever your, your little mission is, mm. you just do any tidy up you need to do. And then if there are any specific effects in play that need to be removed, you remove those as a bit of a tidy up. But otherwise, the time counter goes back to the start of the chain yeah. and we would just move off again with our next round and our next heroes.
Yeah. So I think, is that everything for the round breakdown? Anything I, we missed? I think that's everything we have, everything that we need, yep. Mm -hmm. So the rest of it is just learning special abilities, learning your armor, learning your weapon yep. stats and things. And then there's also going to be that storytelling aspect of it, but we're not doing that in this video. We're not doing it in this video um, because spoilers. Mm -hmm. no, nobody wants to start a book at the end. Yeah, Especially you don't want to start a series of books halfway through. Yeah. All right, well, everybody, I'll tell you what, get your comments in below, tell us what you think of the game. We will move on and we will see you again very soon. We hope you enjoyed this Let's Play. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.